All right, a continuation of our discussion about spatial data. We're going to talk a little bit more about vector data in particular. Like I said in part one, vector data is defined by specific XY coordinate locations. Uh, in ArcGIS, vector data, just so you know, are often referred to as feature classes or shape files. And we describe the different types of um, feature classes as geometry. Discrete representation modeled as coordinate pairs, XY coordinate pairs, um, marking specific locations and nothing else around it. So that's just in contrast to rasters as a little preview. The different geometry types are points, lines, and polygons, and you're hopefully very familiar with this at this point. Um, so points are single XY coordinates that represent you know, a geographic feature or a location. Um, you can use points either to map something discrete or something too small to be displayed as a line or an area at a really large spatial extent. Lines are basically um, connections between points, discrete XY locations. They're called vertices at that point. Um, it, lines don't have any area. It's really important to know that. Lines are used to map things like rivers and streets that do have width to them. Lines do not have width. They're um, kind of a non-dimensional connection between two exact points in space. So we can um, display lines with a thick symbology, but the line itself doesn't have any area for sure, and it actually doesn't have any width. Um, okay, and then polygons, you know, logically are uh, a two-dimensional closed area still defined by the vertices, the XY coordinate locations, um, and they are obviously have area. Okay, the great thing about vector data are the attributes. This is the non-spatial stuff that we can collect and store that describes the location or the feature at the location. And just for terminology, each feature or object goes in a row. Um, it could be every single fire hydrant or stop sign in a city, or it could be a segment of road or um, river, stream segment. Um, so each row is its own feature, and then about that feature, you can store any number of attributes, and that's the columns. How many flanges? What color is it? What rating? When's the last time that it was serviced, etc. So yeah, the power of uh, vector data is the attribution. All of these attributes. This is really, truly the power of vector data. Um, the table, the attribute table, is where you can view the attributes. You can search by an attribute, you can build complex queries, um, sort, and edit. So you can change or add uh, information in the attribute table. A quick introduction to the select by attribute tool. So this is a, a data set of coyote radio collar locations. Um, it's tracking seven different animals in this um, data set. Animals have a unique identifier. The information collected about each animal is um, the sex, what day, month, year, hour, and minute. The radio collar collected the location, the XY coordinate location values, what season it is, breeding, pup, um, whatever. Okay, so um, in this data set, there are probably thousands of records. Um, and we could go in and select by attribute. Maybe we're only interested in knowing the locations of females during their, um, I don't know, let's rearing, what did I set up here? So when you click on select by attribute, you can see in this data set, there's a total of 984 records. Um, I input the coyote locations and then built a query where the sex is equal to female. So we're only gonna select um, records that have a female indication in the sex attribute field and where the season is equal to pup. So we want to know where they're raising their pups. Hit apply and that's the result that you see here. These are all the locations of females. Now you can see that you know many of these are going to be coyote CO2. Some of them are going to be coyote CO7. So we could further go in and symbolize based on animal to see who's where. Um, but you can see that 350 of these records are female coyotes that were captured during um, the pup rearing time of year or season. All right, to, to summarize vector advantages, 
um, it gives you a precise location of a feature. But you just need to be careful. Um, sometimes a point, a point might be representing a city. And so if you're trying to measure between two cities, don't do something silly like report the distance to the nearest centimeter because that would be ridiculous. The point is measuring something that is, you know, hundreds of kilometers wide, maybe. Okay, maybe not hundreds, tens. Uh, you can store many related attributes. We just talked about that. They're very flexible and easy to edit or update. Um, it's easy to move points. It's easy to add points, manipulate or add attributes. Um, from a data management perspective, vector data is really compact as well, and the file sizes are relatively small. And um, because of its coordinate-based structure, it's really well suited for mapping locations, defining specific areas, mapping networks like pipelines, streams, electric lines, road center lines, um, as well as uh, specific locations and areas. All right, let's talk about how we see it now. So shapefiles, feature classes, vector data. Whether it's a point, a line, or a polygon, you're going to see a whole sequence of file types that unify to draw uh, a shapefile correctly in ArcGIS. So when we look at spatial data in Windows Explorer, you're typically going to see between three and seven um, file extensions with the same file name. So this is US County data. And you'll see there's a DBF or database file, a projection file, these SBN and SBX. So three of them are required to draw the data correctly. So don't get confused by this .shp and think this is the shape file. This is the main geometry file, but it can't be drawn without the shx, which is an index file, and the dbf, which is the database file. All three of those are required to draw correctly in ArcGIS. If you go into Windows Explorer and grab this shape file, and email it to yourself and then try and add this to a map later, you'll just get an error saying that it's um, a broken data set. You must have these three. SBN and SBX are spatial indices. Um, yeah, we don't deal with these very often. PRJ is the projection file. This is the file that stores the coordinate system or spatial reference for the data set. If a data set has this, it's pretty handy. So if you're going to copy this data set over or email it to yourself, you might want to grab that one. But the moral of the story is grab them all. Um, if, if you're sharing data, make sure you're, if you're in Windows Explorer, which I would not ever recommend, by the way, um, make sure you're looking carefully at your file names and grab all file extensions that are associated with that file name. OK, looking at it in ArcGIS, um, Esri does a nice job of aliasing those things for us. So I'm going to look into the catalog here, and we're going to look at a data set um, I believe we're going to look at, well, anyway, this is basically a, a digital filing cabinet for spatial data. And it's a way of seeing the data in a really clean way instead of like this .shp file is actually all seven of those file extensions, but it's aliased behind something called a shape file. That's why I mean don't get confused. This is not the same thing as this. It depends on where you're seeing the data. Okay. So in Windows, Logan, um, September 2010, maybe, uh, it looks like an intersect. All of these are necessary to draw this Logan shape file in ArcGIS. And if we look at the same data set in Arc Catalog, you can see the entire thing is aliased behind this one thing. So the moral of the story is use Arc Catalog to move your data if you're going to put everything in a folder or you know, zip something up and email it or share it. Make sure you do it in our catalog so you don't accidentally drop one of these necessary file extensions. OK, remember, vector data is a representation of a very complex real entity. So here's a road shape file. It's just the center line, right? We could symbolize this with a really wide symbol, and it might cover the entire road, but it doesn't actually have any width to it. Um, they also aren't going to track the center line very carefully, as you can see. Right? Look, at, look at all the different places where this line kind of represents where there's a road, but isn't really precise. And in some places, not even accurate. This doesn't go through. Um, you can see that there are places where the road does go through now, and you know maybe it's been updated. Um, there are, are roads that are um, either newer or more complex than it's being mapped. So if you were to calculate the length of this polyline, you wouldn't 
um, report the length to the nearest, nearest millimeter. You hopefully can see that the data can't support that level of precision. Okay, last thing about vector data that's pretty cool is that we have um, the ability to store rules about how the data relates to each other. And it's called topology. Um, we can manage things like overlap. If you have um, a polygon that maps trees and you have a polygon that maps lakes, or maybe this is urban or something like that, they can't overlap each other. You know, the city can't be in the lake. So you can set rules to say these two features can't overlap each other and they need to share a coincident boundary. Um, same with adjacency issues, like when you're dealing with um, property lines or you know state boundaries or things like that, you can say these two features have to share a line. There can be no um, overlap here. Um, you can t make rules about things being inside other things, um, but most importantly, you can set rules like um, here are two roads, but they don't actually connect. You can't make a right-hand turn here. One is an overpass and one is an underpass. You can set those kinds of rules, which helps when you're mapping things like this. That looks like a complete nightmare to me. Um, and most importantly, it allows us to manage networks. So we can set directions on roads. Um, we can have directions on um, pipelines, sewer pipelines or things like that or a stream, we can have from and to nodes so that the stream has direction like it normally would. If a spill were to occur here, we could then model which stream segments are gonna be impacted by this spill. We're not gonna have impacts upstream, right? So that, that directionality helps and that's um, something that we can do with network analyses. Um, and fire departments, UPS, they all use smart data that has directionality to it. Okay, any questions, let me know, and I'll see you next time.